Yeah, we begin this Wednesday edition of the Sportsman Zone with track and field. After being slapped with a 30-month ban, Jamaican quarter miler Christopher Taylor says he feels there is no place in the sport for him anymore. The 24-year-old was found guilty of violating Article 2.3 of the World Anti-Doping Agency's Code, which speaks to evading, refusing or failing to submit a sample collection. Taylor, a Tokyo Olympic and Eugene World Championship finalist, will be eligible to compete again in May 2025. But given his current state of mind, will he make a return to the sport? Here to help us discuss is regional track and field expert, Hubert Lawrence. Um, Hubert, you know, I've heard this discussion um, and in a way it has caught me by surprise. I do understand the comments that were made by Chris Taylor suggesting that he doesn't know if he wants to continue. But when you look at it, a lot of athletes have made successful returns um, from suspensions. 2025, watched him win the primary school 2-4 <laughs> double in 2012. He's been active every year since that time. Um, all through championships, uh, COVID year 2020, but Olympics 21, World Champs 22. So this is the first year since those days that he has missed. It's the cornerstone of his life, running track and field. If you talk to him, loves to run in front of the big stage. Many heroics, world youth champion, you know, all, all the stats on Chris. And so I think right now, is someone broken hearted. This is the cornerstone of his life and it's not gonna be there through 23, this year is gone, through 24, through 25. That means he misses the Olympic Games. He was in the finals, what now, three years ago, and he misses also the world champs in Tokyo, maybe. So he's broken hearted, and maybe with time, that heart will mend. Mm. So you're suggesting whether he returns or whether he makes a successful return is more psychological than it will be physical? It's emotional um, because he's missing a sport which is given a lot lots of excitement, and so he can't do that now. And he's feeling that separation from the sport he loves. Now, 25 is not that far away. Um, for us, who watch the sport and watch lots of different people, but for him, Ricardo, for him, Mariah, it's a big break in activities because he's missed 23 and 24, and will miss some of 25. Yeah. Yeah. So do you think he can make a successful return? I think so. Um, there are cases where the break has been longer, where the candidate has come back, has made a slow start to the comeback, but has come back to be very, very successful. And so Chris is younger, just turned 24, October the 1st. Yeah. Um, and I think if he's back at 26 years old... Well, when he returns, he'll be 25. He'll be 26 <laughs> later that year. Just coming into his prime. And I think he can come back. And if you want to rub out that blot on your record to prove to people that boy, you really are a clean athlete, then at that time you take up the challenge. But it's grief. And right now he's feeling it individually. And when he speaks now, that's the individualized grief that he's feeling from missing the sport he loves. Yeah, we speak about him being at the peak now. And if he's emotional and grieving, um, how does he bounce back? Because that means when you're going through an emotional period, you're not really going to do the things that are necessary, like the training and keeping your body up to par as to where it would need to be. We, we've spoken that, you know, 25, he'll still be young and he can still do the things. But Hubert, where does he find that inner drive to keep himself and get himself ready for the time? He has a tight circle around him. I know him from his Calabar days, has a, has a family of people who help keep him on track, and I guess those people plug back into him now and keep him upright in the break. Um, what does he do between then and now? Um, when I interviewed him for the Champs Preview 2019, he talked about school. Um, he talked about going pro right out of high school, but also at some point doing school. Maybe that's what fills the time in between, some sort of course of study. And he has had some injuries that have held him back while he's been running. The body heals naturally. He comes back refreshed. and. Uh, Starting maybe late 24, you start to train for 25, and then you keep on going. But right now, he's brokenhearted. Yeah, one more question. They said that his competitive results from November 16, 2022 to January 2023 will be disqualified. What are some of those prizes that he would have lost? 
Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. Okay, because I was concerned. I was wondering, like, you know, because that would add to the emotional... And I always wondered what would happen to him, because part of the narrative is of Chris um, travelling out of Norman Manley and being met by the doping control people. And I wonder if at some point some mitigating circumstances might come, because what do you do? Are you travelling? Are you staying? If you take the test, if you stop and spend an hour doing this thing, you miss your flight. So I wonder if this is the end of the matter so far for Chris now. But um, hopefully, with time, that broken heart will heal. That love he's always had for track and field will, will, will grow in his heart again. Young man, um, Jamaica with him got silver in the 4x4 in 2022, the only men's medal in the world champs in Eugene. And I think he has a role to play in the future. Yeah, for sure. And, and, and yes, Hubert, to answer your question, the matter is complete. Um, and now it's for him to do his time, which is two and a half years, 30 months, and make a decision if he does return. You did make the point, though, about how much running Chris Taylor has done from he was at primary school right through to high school, competing not just throughout the high school season, which is January to about April, but all the way through the summer and making junior national teams and even in cases winning a senior championship as a junior. And we were watching him not far from making the Olympic team in 2016. There you as go. As a schoolboy. So there is some mileage. Yeah. And maybe it's never good to be banned, yeah. but maybe there is rest and respite from the wear and tear. And the Chris Taylor we get back in 2025 might be rested and Ready. with a chip on his shoulder with something to prove. Yeah, mm -hmm. and given what we've seen, um, I think generally over time, that period, 25 to let's say 28, is generally looked at as a peak period for athletes. If you still have the motivation, if you're still willing to put the training in. And so he still comes back at a good time age-wise. Yep, um, the, the following world youth champion is Antonio Watson. Yeah. So Jamaica goes forward at 4x4 four four if Chris does come back with two champions. Watson is world champion now, um, waiting to take over. Um, can he, with time, recover the enthusiasm yeah. to go out at 5 a.m. in the morning, go to the weight room, break your back, yeah. come back in the evening and put in the mileage and the laps? and the sprint work and go back the next morning. Yeah. If he were to come back, if it was a six-month ban, maybe no. Yeah. But in a couple of years, there's time for him to recover, I think. Yeah. One of, well, I think the most difficult thing for any athlete in a situation like this is when you lose your sponsorship. Um, as he said in an interview last week, he has lost his Puma sponsorship. So that's income that we're talking about. How would you advise him to proceed over the next year and a half? Well, first things first, um, did he save any money? Um, does he have money put up he can go to school in the meantime? Will family come to his shoulder? Um, family maybe who have jobs that he could do to keep him going in between. Yeah. Because yeah. when you have no money, that's dreadful. Um, does he have to come back home? to Jamaica? Will he incur rental costs to live? Comestibles, groceries. Um, so it's difficult, but I think what I know about his support group, he'll survive, he'll be okay. Mm. I certainly hope so. Um, quite apart from track, he's a young man with lots of potential on and off the track if you talk to him and you wish for him the best. Yeah, I don't know how much you heard of exactly what happened that, of course, led to the violation and subsequently the suspension. But what do you think of the whole sequence of events? Yeah, we heard about the airport incident, um, and it shows how serious doping control is. It's not so much whereabouts. Mm -hmm. They've come to check you three times back to back at your home or your training location or something and not found you and so the third one kicks off a positive doping result. It is that because he is traveling, he doesn't stop to take the doping test, and that's construed as a refusal to take the test or a desire to evade the test, as if you're hiding something. And so for 
the other youngsters, other veterans in the sport looking at this, that shows you again how grave this thing is, yeah. how this thing can stop you in your track. This is an Olympic finalist. Yes. This is a world finalist. This is a youth, world youth champion. And here he is, beaten down by what he may feel is a convergence of ill circumstances. Mm -hmm. yeah. But ultimately, a lesson to learn. Absolutely, Ricardo. About uh, how you handle this, these this, situations this is why I bring as an it. athlete. This, this is why I table it. Yeah. So those who are saying, well, Chris Salty, man, this is the situation you face. No, would it have been better had he missed his flight, taken the test, gotten a negative, and paid to reschedule his flight, or flown the next day? Um, and you have to say, it would be. Yeah. yeah. It definitely would. Hubert Lawrence, thank you very much for joining us on the Sportsmax Zone. Your best friend is across the room, and we're going to have a quick check-in with him because he has all the horse racing information. Lance time. <laughs> well, great to have Hubert in our studios. Uh, Caymanus Park is calling all kings and queens. It's time to unleash your inner royalty on Saturday at the second staging of the richest horse race in the English-speaking Caribbean, the Mute Mile. The post-position draw took place on Tuesday night at the Rock Hotel in down downtown Kingston, and this is how the 16 entrants will be lining up. Let's have a look at the post-position draw now. She's My Destiny, who was the Gold Cup winner, um, is in post position one. Blue Vinyl, a double classic winner last year, in post position two in the three box. Mamma Mia, who won the 1,000 Guineas and the Oaks this year. Mahogany, top rated, second in the Gold Cup this year. The Gold Cup winner last year. Um, also in the field, we have Runaway Algo, who is coming off um, 10 career wins, five of those wins this year. Mojito won the 2,000 Guineas this year. And Atomic, of course, in the 10 box, the horse of the year and on a five race winning streak, one of the favorites for the event. In the 11 box, we have Duke, who was a surprise second place finisher in last year's Mute Mile. The field also includes a number 13 horse, Perfect Draw, who has one of two foreign riders in the field, uh, Daisuke Fukumoto, who is from Japan, rides at Woodbine in Canada, will be riding Perfect uh, Brew for trainer Richard Azan. American Tap is one of the foreign entries here from the Howard Jagai stables. American Tap won on its uh, Caymanus Bart debut a couple of weeks ago. Rough Entry is considered by many to be the favorite here. This horse is based in Florida and Rough Entry has eight wins in Florida, two of uh, the wins coming already this year and uh, the French rider Julian Leperoux will be aboard and the 16 horse is Ability who was an upset winner of the Derby back in August. So a very, very strong 16-horse field here. And um, most of the trainers, I would think, would be reasonably happy with uh, the post-position draw. And uh, executive chairman of the SVREL, Solomon Sharp, SVREL, of course, the promoters of racing in Jamaica, Sharp is stating that the changes uh, that have been implemented for this year's uh, event um, is expected, or the changes are expected, to improve the product. So we've been restructuring this whole product, putting our money where our mouth is, and um, here it is. I'm really excited. I still can't believe it's all happening at this level, but this is just the start. I'm going to wake up very soon. I'm going to smile. We're going to have a great, great race day on Saturday, and then I'm going to go back to dream again. So guys, our local guys, the guys who are um, on the internet, get your money ready, get your horses here next year, because we're going to make this bigger and better. Yes, yeah, so at 150,000 US dollars, this is an improvement, the purses, on last year's inaugural staging of the event, which was, I think, about 120,000 US, never before in the history of a Caricom horse racing. So we're talking Jamaica, Trinidad and Tobago, and uh, Barbados. Have we ever had a purse as high as US $150,000? So this is a, a massive, massive uh, purse increase here, and um, uh, uh, an event that we expect uh, many will consider uh, going miles to see and of course Sportsmax will have live commentary on the event it will have a post time of 4:45 Jamaica time that's 5:45 Eastern Caribbean time and you can't afford to miss it because Mara will be splendidly attired and um, she's expected to stop traffic 
at Caymanis Park on, on, on Saturday. I'm not sure if she's willing to give us a preview. Or is she? No, I only showed it to you, Lance. You have to match me. But I'm looking forward, of course, to seeing all of our viewers. I know the team. It's kings and queens, so Lance will be looking like a king. I'm trying to look like a queen. And we look forward to seeing all of you there at Caymanis Park. Yeah, so that Saturday afternoon, the Mute Mile, the second staging of it. And I was asked who was the favorite to win this event. And to be quite honest, I can't answer that question. It's such a wide open event. From the local based horses, Atomica as a horse of the year on a five race winning streak is highly recommended. But there are some foreign entrants, including Rough Entry and American Tap, that are very, very highly thought of. And there are many of the local horses as well, like She's uh, My Destiny, uh, who. Uh, and, and, and attracting a lot of, of interest and a lot of confidence. So it's a wide open event uh, on tomorrow's show and Friday's show. We'll have the forecast odds, which would probably direct you to uh, the events uh, or the events favorites for the event, for the, for the eight mile, eight furlong event, one mile. So um, a tough race to call, but we'll have a lot more discussion on that. Now, coming up at the track on the Sportsmax Zone Thursday, getting ready for the Mute Mile. At Jamaica's K Manus Bar, the post position draw and preview of Caricom's richest ever horse race, plus the story of an eighth consecutive trainers championship win in Florida for Barbadian trainer Safi Joseph Jr. coming up at the track Thursday on the Sportsmag Zone.